So today I'm going to be talking about the blue economy. And the best way to represent this is just showing where we actually are. We're surrounded by blue. Oops. And we need to go back. OK. Um, and I'm going to start off with a little story about how Algo Scientific, the company I work for, was started. Um, so not too far from here, in the middle of Lake Erie, I was uh, finishing up my dissertation research at Michigan State. And my dad was helping me collect water samples out in the lake. And lo and behold, we're 10 miles offshore, and the engine dies. And anybody that's a boater here knows that if you're on a 17 or 18-foot boat, weighs a couple thousand pounds, it's going to take quite a long time to get back with a little five-horsepower backup engine. So we had a lot of time on our hands. And some point in that three or four-hour cruise back to Monroe, um, casually brought up this topic to my dad. I said, you know, there's these companies out there that want to grow algae to convert into biofuels. Now, he's a smart guy, smarter than me, and he's an entrepreneur. And this piqued his interest. And he thought, that's pretty cool. We didn't have anything else to do. So we kind of brainstormed for the next couple hours, did some back of the envelope types of calculations. And by the time we got back to Monroe, we had this idea. We were going to grow algae right here in the Midwest. And so a couple months later, made some contacts with the utility companies, and they said, you know what, you're still a grad student. Why don't you do this business plan competition at U of M? Detroit Edison was sponsoring this clean energy competition. So I decided to enter that. And I met some really bright students at U of M, two uh, business grad students and a chemical engineering student. And together, the four of us entered this business plan competition. And over four months, we really refined this idea into a business. We had this business plan. And lo and behold, four months later, we won the whole shebang and 70,000 bucks. And so that actually gave us the ability to say, OK, it's no longer an idea. Let's just go do it. What do we have to lose? Right? And so then we took that money. We leased lab space at the Ann Arbor Spark Incubator. And we started doing it. And so that's where this all began. So here in Michigan, we truly are surrounded by a wonderful place. We have all this fresh water around us. Now, you might not realize how rare this is in the world, but over 97% of the water in the world is salty, pretty much unusable. The remaining 2.5%, a lot of it's tied up in glaciers and underground. Now, a very tiny fraction is actually fresh water that we see out in the lakes and the rivers. And what's really amazing is that the Great Lakes represent over 20% of that water, right here within 500 miles of us. That's pretty amazing. Now, from a world perspective, that's really rare. In fact, worldwide, water is really scarce, and most oftentimes, it's polluted. And when I'm talking about pollution, what I'm talking about, in most cases, is these harmful algal blooms. And this is caused by a lot of runoff from the land and all these nutrients that run into the water, and it makes this big floating mat of algae. You've seen this out on the golf courses, perhaps in your local ponds. And it's that floating green scum. And it's not just bad to look at. These things can make toxins, can affect fisheries, can affect recreational opportunities, and it's a health hazard. So it's just not aesthetic. It actually has an economic impact. So maybe you saw the Beijing Olympics. This is a little snafu. They didn't account for the fact that there might be this massive algal bloom right in the middle of the sailing venue. Uh, that was kind of embarrassing. Right here closer to home, in the Gulf of Mexico, we had this massive algal bloom every single summer. And it's fueled by all the nutrients that are running off in the Mississippi River. And it basically generates this huge algal bloom right outside the Mississippi River in the Gulf of Mexico. Now, the downside with all this algae is that once it sinks to the bottom of the ocean, it starts to decompose, and it consumes all the oxygen. And this creates what we call a dead zone, where basically there's no oxygen. That means that shrimp, scallops, and fish can't survive in a huge section of the ocean. This stretches all the way from Louisiana all the way to Texas. This kind of makes the oil spill look a little bit um, amateurish, because this happens every single year. Another example, even closer to home, is right here in southeast Michigan. In Ford Lake, there's this algae bloom that happens every single summer. So for about two months, the people that live on that lake are looking at this 
the whole summer long. Not something that we want to be looking at. And now back to Lake Erie. The reason why I was out in Lake Erie I was actually sampling right here for some toxic algae that forms there every single summer. So if you're out on Lake Erie in the middle of July or August, this is pretty much what you're looking at. Not necessarily something that we uh, would pride ourselves on. So that uh, date on two years ago when I was out in the middle of Lake Erie, I changed from being a researcher looking at this stuff to trying to change it. And that's where all the scientific starts. So the problem, as I mentioned, is nutrient pollution. Okay? I'm just going to walk you through this slide. It's not terribly complicated. But we first start off with nutrients in the form of fertilizers. Farmers fertilize their fields, and we're talking about nitrogen and phosphorus. It's the same stuff you'd also put on your lawn. Okay? The farmer grows the crops. Okay? They ship those crops to your local um, food and beverage producer. Anybody like Atwater Brewery? I'm a big fan. So these breweries, in the process of making that great beer, they also generate a lot of wastewater. Okay? And that wastewater typically goes down the drain out to the wastewater treatment plant. Now, treatment plants were built 50, 60 years ago. They weren't designed to remove the nutrients from the water. They remove all the really nasty stuff that would make us sick, but these nutrients pass through the system. Okay? And so that means that nitrogen and phosphorus, the fertilizers, get dumped into our waterways, and that's what's basically promoting the growth of this algae, which has these host of other problems. Okay? So here it's a leaky system. So what we thought was, I think we can improve upon this. Why don't we convert that waste into something valuable, right? People are growing algae to make biofuels. Why can't we grow algae on the wastewater? Okay? So this is the big concept of what algal scientific is about. We take wastewater and convert it into something that's useful and make clean water at the same time. This is what it looks like. We figured it's better to actually treat the wastewater at a site. So let's say that we'd go to a Budweiser or we'd go to Atwater Brewing Company. We'd put in our algae growth tanks. Basically, we'd take the wastewater straight out of the brewery, dump it into our on-site growth tanks, where our specially selected algae grow on those nutrients really quickly. They soak up these nutrients into their bodies, and then what we do is we harvest that algae out of the water. Okay? That leaves clean water to be discharged, and at the same time, we end up with this huge amount of algal biomass that can be converted into all sorts of things. You know, we could actually turn it right back into fertilizer, or we could convert it into biofuels or bioplastics. You know, the opportunities for the biomass is amazing. So why use algae? This is the scientific slide, so don't worry. It's the only one. Uh, right now, we're using bacteria. Bacteria are really great at removing a lot of things. The thing is, they're really small cells. They're not very good at soaking up those nutrients, OK? And so as a result, they tend to leak these nutrients back out, and that's why the system isn't working right now. Now, people for 50, 60 years have also been using algae to treat wastewater. The only trouble is, it's a really passive system. Basically, they make hundreds of acres of these ponds, they dump the wastewater in, they wait for 100 days, and by the time it's done, it's cleaned up. The only thing is, Atwater Brewing Company doesn't have 100 acres in the parking lot across the street to treat that wastewater. It's really not possible. So what we've done is we've combined the benefits of using algae plus the benefits of using bacteria in this small system, and we've created our own system. Basically, the research was to find out what types of algae species work the best at taking up those nutrients and figuring out a way to condense a couple hundred acres into one acre. Okay? And we've actually been able to do that, which is pretty amazing considering we've only been doing this for about a year in the lab. So in the, in the end, we end up with a whole bunch of algae biomass and we've get, got clean water. So now, we've basically been able to close the loop on these nutrients. Remember, we still put fertilizers on the fields. We still grow the crops. Atwater and Budweiser and Coca-Cola are still making their products. But now we take their wastewater, put it through our system, and at the same time, now we're making that fertilizer again that can go back on the fields. So that's what we call closing the loop. And at the same time, we're protecting our shorelines. So here's Sleeping Bear Sand Dunes. If you haven't been, it's a beautiful place. I'd like to keep that water blue for my kids. So I mentioned you know, we had this business plan competition at U of M. I also want to acknowledge all the other entrepreneurial community um, organizations here in Southeast Michigan. 
You know, the Clean Energy Prize was really just the first step. But along the way, we've also gotten a lot of help from Ann Arbor Spark. We've gotten funding from the state and also private investors. And we've also taken advantage of all these other groups to present at, including today at TEDx. And so if you have a business idea, just like our crazy idea in the boat ride home, you know, take advantage of the entrepreneurial community here. We did, and I think anybody can do it. So thank you very much.